I'm going to save you some time. Yes, it is worth it. If you've never played Sea of Stars and you want to find out why, or you have and you're just looking for some more Sea of Stars content, stick around and waste some time with me. Let me start by describing my gaming situation. I have a PC downstairs in my office where I do some of my programming, video editing, and so forth. It's also where I do my heavy duty, high octane gaming, you know, with games like Cyberpunk 2077. But sometimes I just, just want a more relaxed gaming environment where I just have a few minutes before I want to go to bed and I just want to kick my feet up for a while, turn off my brain and drift into some sweet, simple escapism. A Sea of Stars to me, feels like it was designed with this very scenario in mind and luckily i have my old faithful ps4 in our bedroom where sea of stars is right at home where AAA games these days feel like they're just assaulting your eyes at every turn sea of stars has a simple and elegant pixel design i'm more used to hyper realistic graphics in games so to find a pixel art game that rivals some of the best games out there in visual design, it, it's something truly special. The character designs are fantastic and the world they exist in is impeccably created. What especially impressed me is the way the game uses light. The way the light reacts to objects, environments and characters in game, it creates this effect where you, where you actually forget that you're playing a pixel style game. Light isn't just used to make things look pretty though. It's also a mechanic in the game where you use light to accomplish certain goals. I haven't played very far into the game, so I can't speak too much about the exploration as a whole yet, but the environmental and traversal design is on point from, from what I've seen so far. It's just fun to move around in this world. It has plenty of variety through different elevations and verticality, all tied together by simple but enjoyable environmental puzzles and traversal mechanics like climbing and swimming, jumping and vaulting. It's clear to me that Sabotage Studios' experience in platforming game design inspired much of the traversal mechanics in Sea of Stars. They found a way somehow to merge the level design of the two genres, and the result is exploration that's extremely satisfying. Sea of Stars also has one of my favorite fast travel mechanics ever in a game. Fast traveling aside, what I really want to talk about is the combat. Sea of Stars combat just makes me smile. It's just, it's just so well done. It's turn-based, but it's far more interactive than I expected. Your basic attacks have critical hits, as you would expect in any game like this. Except here, you are in control. Your timing with the next attack will determine if you get a critical hit or not. Similarly, blocking is not a random game of chance, as it often tends to be. But rather, you have an active block system where timing it well will reduce damage taken. Magic abilities also have interactive mechanics, from a simple charged up fireball for more damage, to a more skill focused mini game where you have to keep your attack alive as long as possible. Probably the part of the combat that I enjoy the most is where you can disrupt your enemy's major attacks by chaining together certain attack types. The game tells you how many turns you have before the enemy will, will unleash the attack and what damage types are needed to disrupt their attack. This adds another dimension to combat where you must use your characters and their respective skills and damage types wisely. Performing a 
balancing act between maximum damage and reducing damage as much as possible. Now, as far as the story goes, I still have a long way to go. What I love about it so far is that it's done a great job of creating intrigue early on that has piqued my interest. It's planted a few seeds already about possible upcoming conflicts, which creates a sense of tension that drives me to want to know more. They've used small hints about characters and how everything might not be quite what it seems to be. Now, all of this is storytelling 101, but Sea of Stars does it so well that it has maximum impact in a very short amount of time. Within the first few hours, they've made me fully invested about where all of this is going to go. Then to tie it all together is the soundtrack. In a game where you have no voiceovers, the quality of the soundtrack and the sound effects are paramount. Here, Sea of Stars shines as well with its classic 16-bit style soundtrack. Having just finished Chrono Trigger, the soundtrack in Sea of Stars already makes me feel nostalgic about one of the best games I've ever played. They even got Yasunori Mitsuda, the original composer for Chrono Trigger, to do a few soundtracks for Sea of Stars. And it's, it's just beautiful. As with the sound, every aspect of Sea of Stars feels like it's paying homage to Chrono Trigger. It feels like a true spiritual successor. My JRPG experience is practically non-existent, but I consider myself extremely lucky in finding a game so soon after playing Chrono Trigger that scratches that itch for me. Playing Sea of Stars is an experience that I really need in my day-to-day -day life. It's a simple but beautiful game set in a compelling world with an intriguing story and characters. It's my go-to pastime when I just want to forget the world and everyone in it after a long day of real life. And now for the giveaway. As promised, a public subscriber who commented on our Chrono Trigger review has been chosen for the giveaway of a Steam copy of Sea of Stars. So congratulations, Steven Bomarito. Stefan Bomarito. I'm sorry. Terribly sorry for butchering the name. But there you go. You will find our email address in the description. So please get in contact with us in the next two weeks to claim the giveaway. So that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. As always, I appreciate your time. Cheers.